Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and I had a suggestion for a video from a patron that seems pretty relevant to toss up now, considering we have the anniversary sale taking place at the moment, and that request was to cover the melting system that's in Star Citizen. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with that terminology, melting a ship is done when you bought something and you want to reclaim that ship or package in exchange for credits. It's basically a way to, a way to change up your fleet in the game. Now, when it comes to melting, there's a few things that you need to keep in mind. One being that anything you have on that package gets erased. Basically, you go back to nothing. So, um, if it's a, a physical package where you're supposed to get like a ship model or a poster or something like that, you are no longer going to get that. It's basically totally gone. Uh, two, you only get back what you spent. And a good example here is going to be the Star Fair. You know, like the Gemini, for example, was initially $245. Now it's $340. So if you bought it at $245, just because it now is worth $340, you're only getting back what you spent. So you would get back the $245. Three, you need at least one package to play the game at release. So what that means is if you've got your, like, three ships, and one of them has your alpha ga game package on it, um, it's got your Squadron 42, it's got your um, Persistent Universe, if you end up melting that, you are not going to be able to play the game. So make sure you always have at least one package available, and the system is nice enough to let you know that you're melting your last one. Now before we get too far, if you're wanting to change up your fleet, there is another option known as a cross chassis upgrade or a CCU or a ship upgrade. And this option allows you to retain what's in your original ship package and just change the ship that's inside of it. So with that in mind, let's run through some different scenarios on which is better and when which each one may be used. So option one, you have a ship that has a uh, LTI, but you want to change the ship. This is a really common occurrence for the things called like LTI tokens, which are basically cheap ships with LTI that you could then cross chassis into something else. Like the P-72, I believe, was $35. The Archimedes, um, or if you start talking about the 85X, which is available now, that's $50. Um, they're relatively cheap ships with LTI. So let's say you want to change that to a freelancer. You would be able to then take that LTI and transfer it to a different ship, meaning that um, like the freelancer. And it's basically changing that ship into something else. The CCU is a better path there to retain the LTI. Scenario two, you have a multi-ship package and you want to change one ship inside that package. Um, this is pretty common with things like discounted packages that include like credits and extra ships. Um, a good example of that is going to be the one that has the uh, Carrick, the Terrapin, and the Dragonfly. Or you can start talking about the Caterpillar that came with LTI because it came with two Dragonflies. In this situation, let's say you want to change one of those Dragonflies to a Cutlass because you get to keep that LTI. You would then want to use the Cross Chassis Upgrade to change that Dragonfly into a Cutlass and you end up keeping the um, the, the LTI from that Dragonfly. Uh, that's a good option because if you melt it, you lose the entire pack. And sure, you could end up buying back a Caterpillar, you could end up buying back the, um, the Cutlass, but neither one's going to have LTI and you end up spending more in that situation. Scenario three, you have a ship with six months insurance and the anniversary sale is going on right now and these ships have four year insurance. It's kind of a no brainer that you want to get the better option there. In that situation, you're going to keep whatever insurance you have on your original package. So if you keep your six-month insurance um, in that ship that has that package, you're kind of missing out on the four-year option. In that situation, you would want to melt the ship and then use those credits to repurchase the new one. So let's say you've got an Avenger with six months of insurance. You can melt that, rebuy the one that's going on for sale now, or at least whenever it will be up for sale, and use those credits so you basically break even but come out with longer-term insurance. Uh, and scenario four, you've got a lot of small ships, but you want a big ship. You know, let's say you've got uh, an Avenger that has your game package on it. You also have a Cutlass and a Freelancer, but you really want a whole seat. Well, the whole seat costs you about 200 bucks. The Cutlass and a Freelancer are both worth 100 and 110 dollars. So you would want to keep the Avenger because it's actually got your game package. But then you would then want to melt the other two, so you basically get 210 dollars in credits. So you could then buy the whole seat outright. You can't upgrade from two ships into one. You actually have to use the melt instead of a cross chassis upgrade. The other place where this is going to be really common is when we start talking about ships that have value that increases. You know, so for example, the Starfare I already mentioned, you know, it was eventually it was initially sold at $245 and now it's worth $340. If you melt that ship, you're basically kind of giving away $95. And what that means is you basically have a $95 game coupon. So if even if you don't want to keep your Starfare, I would encourage you to at least find something that ends up being closer to that price range. So for example, the Gemini's $345 right now 
or it's 340 right now, you could upgrade it to a whole D, one of the biggest carrier uh, ships in the game as far as carrying cargo, for $10. And you spend 245 meaning you're basically saving $95 off of that ship, which is significant. Now, those are big, big dollar amounts, but even smaller ships see that. You know, like the... Car 2 Wall was initially sold at $150 and is now sold for $170. So you could turn that basically into a saver for free and save yourself $25 or $20 in the long run. Now, it's also worth noting that with all of this, you can't CCD or downgrade at this point. So if you have a ship that's worth more than what you want, um, the only way to get it is to actually melt your original ship. Use the credits to buy the ship that you want. There's no way to really just say, I'm going to go from a Sabre to a Super Hornet, and they're just going to give me five bucks back. It doesn't work like that. There's also an additional system in the game that lets you change your mind, and it's known as the buyback system. So let's say that you have a melted, um, or that you melted a Carrick with LTI, and now you really regret that decision. You can kind of change your mind, and you can get it back. The catch here is that you can only buy it back using credits four times a year, or once a quarter. And there's no limit to what you can buy back, but you must do it using real money if you don't have one of those quarterly tokens available to let you buy back using credits. Now, if you're interested in seeing what you have available to buy back, in the hangar portion of the RSI site, there is a buybacks option, and you can go through that process there. Now, one strategy a lot of people use is to buy a lot of things during these sales, melt them, and then they have them available later down the line. For example, I have a Terrapin that I'm not sure I w what I want it to be. I know I don't want it to be a Terrapin, but I don't know what it's going to end up being. So for me, I bought a Terrapin to Whole C upgrade, and I'm going to melt that. And then I'm going to do a Terrapin to Redeemer upgrade, and then I'm going to melt that. So when I do decide what I want, I just buy back the option that ends up suiting my needs best. It's a really good way to have a lot of options available. Just remember that you need to work it all out before launch, because once the game goes to live, you're not going to be able to actually, um, you know, change these things out to and fro. Also, you can't melt something until you've owned it for 24 hours. So in the situation I just mentioned, if I bought the upgrade from Terrapin to Hull C, I couldn't then melt that and use the credits to buy the Terrapin to Redeemer upgrade until 24 hours have expired of me owning that upgrade. It's a little bit convoluted, but the website kind of walks you through it. But it is important to know what options you have available. And buying and selling those upgrades is a really good strategy, especially for limited ships that aren't always going to be available um, on the website. So if you have questions about any of this, please let me know in the comments. I'll try and get to them. Otherwise, uh, the community is really good about answering those questions as well. Um, if you want to kind of bounce strategies off of people, everybody's always willing to help. Otherwise, I hope this kind of helps clarify some of the different options you have available. I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful day and happy anniversary time. Take care.